Okay, these are some makeshift quick videos for those of you who simply have to catch up on Greek. Uh, I cannot catch up on vocabulary for you, so you entirely have to do that on your own. But remember, this is our major text, and you have to make sure that you catch up on a different elements. Now notice that there actually is a particular order in which the material is offered. So let me take you to the index here. We start off with the alphabet and basic lessons. And notice that next there is one of these language lessons, words and meaning. So we go from parts to words. And remember, Stevens points out that words in and of themselves do not have meaning. That's why we use the term gloss. From there on, we went to the idea, the basic idea of Greek verbs. We introduce you to the Greek verb system by dealing with the very basic verb structure. One part of verb structure, besides its tense, is the fact that they have voice. So initially in chapter two, you are introduced to the active voice, and then there's a separate chapter that introduces the middle and passive voice. At that point, you may think, oh, now I can do translation. So that's when Stevens has a special language lesson to remind us that translation, all translation, always inherently is interpretation because we start making choices. Is something a passive or a middle, for example? Now we need to have some more building blocks in order to deal with Greek sentences. And so in chapter four, the nouns were introduced. We already knew from the verb system that Greek is inflected, so the nouns are inflected as well. That is, all words, all active words in Greek are inflected, they are encoded. The verbs had person and number built in to the words. In Greek, the word has embedded within it is job description, as well as a, uh, a gender disposition there. So Greek nouns have cases, and you were introduced to that in chapter four, as well as the fact that they decline, so get these codes according to certain patterns. The easiest patterns are the second declension patterns. And so that's why we start with those in chapter four, the masculine and neuter second declension, then in chapter five, you learn another pattern. That's all it is, is declining patterns, little uh, patterns, little ways of, of forming these words, what we call the first declension. At that point, you start really just kind of needing the article because you start wondering why don't these nouns have articles? So we introduce the article because articles in Greek only take first or second declension the, um, uh, forms. So it makes sense that you get introduced to that following chapters four and five. At that point, there is some review in vocab, and then the third declension gets introduced. It was okay to wait with that because the article does not use third declension endings. Now, that also means that we're gonna have some uh, interesting um, kind of challenges here because third declension nouns can have articles. So you could have a third declension noun with an article and that article then will have a first or a second declension. And so you will have to match them and be aware of that. Next, we were introduced or are introduced to other parts of the sentences, such as adjectives. And we know adjectives from English, they are modifiers. They can modify a noun, we call it attributive. They can also stand on their own as substantives. And together with the predicates, they can be a copulative verb. Um, so next we have pronouns. Um, they can also perform all sorts of functions in uh, the Greek sentences. And then we have 
prepositions all along the way. We have learned those already in uh, vocabulary lists, but in chapter 10, there's a little bit more of a, um, an explanation about the function of prepositions. Next, in chapter 11, adverbs are introduced in some more uh, interesting parts, after which we catch up a little bit on the vocab, and then some specific parts of behavioral verbs are introduced. And then it's a good time, Stephen says, to kind of recapitulate or just summarize what the shapes of verbs are all about. And then you see in chapter 13, chapter 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 that there are different tenses to the verbs that will be treated independently in different chapters. Greek also has a different way of setting up conditional sentences, so that's in chapter 14, if and then. Um, the passive system in chapter 18, remember you were introduced to a passive voice, but there's also a complete passive system will be introduced along with the perfect system in chapter 19. And then another aspect of the verbs was this idea of mood. And so that forms lessons in the chapter 20 um, and 21. And then some other verb parts are infinitives and adverbial infinitives, as well as participles and adjectival participles. And we close out the book with me verbs. We have learned omega verbs, just the way they were encoded. In Old Greek, they had a different encoding system called me verbs. Along the way, we are introduced to some ahead of time, like a me, or did a me, or tith a me, a fee a me, but there's actually a steady system for that, and so you learn those on the way out. So that's the way we will study Greek.